Once, there was a great war that tore a young nation apart. This was not a war against an outside invader, but a conflict between two sides of the same coin. The brave souls of the cavalry were often called upon for particularly dangerous assignments. This is their story. Thank Glover and Parrish were captured. You think? Didn't see him shot. No one else did either. The horses are missing too. Yeah, they might have been grabbed. I hope they didn't keep the damn mouth shut. I pull my troops from the jaws of the dragon and save them from certain slaughter, and they call me a coward rightfully get upset for being called a coward and they call me crazy. You did the right thing, General. Obviously someone agreed. You were awarded the promotion. Makes me think. They must think I've acquired some knowledge. Wisdom is never acquired easily. Our tactics are gonna have to change, people. We keep making decisions and we stick by them regardless of the consequences. Regardless. What's your name, soldier? Trooper Parrish, 2nd South Carolina Cavalry, Confederate States of America. That's clever. Tell you what I'm gonna do. I'll give you 10 seconds to tell me what I wanna know. And if you don't tell me what I wanna know, I'm gonna shoot you. Trooper Parrish, 2nd South Carolina Cavalry, Confederate States of America. 10, 9, 8, Seven, six, five. <laughs> Four. Three. Shoot him. Olivia. Yes, it was, Henry. Any longer, I'd forget what daylight looked like. If you don't mind, how about looking after the men who will be going here and clean up a little bit? All right, now. Hold on there. Doctor! Doctor! I need to see the captain. Who's he with?
I'll get a courier. You must be Captain Chessman. Yes, ma'am. One of your soldiers is inside, insists on speaking to you. We're lucky to have him with us, Captain. He's lost a lot of blood. Can I see him? Well, you can try. I've given him the last of the laudanum. Hey, Captain. I can come back if you want me to. No. I, I need to tell you. Glover's dead. What happened? We got caught during the fight. Some Yankee captain shot him. Who? I think his name was Falstaff. Falstaff? He kept asking questions. You mean to tell me he was shot after you was taken prisoner? Mm hmm. He didn't like the answers, so he shot him. What happened then? I ran. And he shot me in the leg. Probably pretty cowardly. No. No, that's not cowardly. You did what you had to do. Doc and Miss Libya fix you up, son. Send you home for a little rest. No, as soon as I can ride again, I want back in the troop. Well, if you want to be back in the troop, I'll put you back in the troop. So we're here they call him what we did yesterday, a victory. Well, we killed more of them than he did of us. Bunch of Yanks headed back north. Sounds like good news to me. Well, I can't argue with that. So what's next? Where are we going? I'll let Boyle fill you in. This ain't 100%. Things may change. I think we're headed north. How far north? Kentucky. Maybe farther. Think that's a real good idea? Could end this war quick. Peyton, have you been out here all morning? Yes, ma'am. Just keeping watch. Well, good. Your father's letter said he'd be here sometime this week. Might not be today. Might not be tomorrow. I think he'll be today. Well, that's good, but you can't be too sure of that. I'm pretty sure he'll make it to the house today, Mama. He's right on the other side of the field right now. Thank you, Mrs. Chessman. This has been the best darn supper I've had in a long, long time. So, Peyton came across a copy of the Augusta Chronicle about a month ago, and uh, mentioned about all you were a part of. We actually got reporters following us around now. Reporters? They're in the fight with you? They ain't that stupid. They ain't gonna get that close. When can I join up, Paul? Well, I need you here, boy. Look after your mother in the farm. 
I hear about it and I read about it. I don't know a lot, but I do want to fight. He wants to be just like his daddy, R.L. I know. If something happened to you, Peyton, our family name would... It's hard enough on me with you out there, R.L. But with the two of you out there fighting, I just go crazy. Well, we can't have that. Fact is, you're too young, Peyton. He ain't going in right now. I promise you that. Things are pretty well. The supply chain's hard to keep up. It's time consuming for the troops. Well, as you know, I'm an old railroad man from way back. Around here we call it the supply train. <laughs> Uncle Philip, I tell you, I wish we had more of your locomotives to work with. Uh, all in good time, all in good time. Uh, have you been back to the old family homestead? Yes, sir. Surprisingly enough, I get back there from time to time. Well, that's good to hear. I Hope Aunt Minnie's lumbago's doing better. Where are you off to next? Maryland, Pennsylvania. Big movement up from Richmond, and you know we go where the action is. What's your prediction? How long is this war gonna last? Well, three, six months at the most. Really? Yes, sir. So you're thinking everybody's gonna be home by Christmas time? Lord willing, we'll all be home by Christmas. A hickory tree stained a deep dark red like a break of dawn. One went north and one went south, made our home a divided house. The wounds of bleeding cancers came right back home. From heaven above, the angels cried, and brothers screamed, and brothers died. Doc, we've got to get our boys out of here. No hospital here. They're behind enemy lines. They got to go now or they'll wind up as prisoners. Some of these men will die if they're moved. Then we got to move them. They can be moved right now. Captain Falstaff. Second Indiana Cavalry. That's supposed to be some kind of hospital? Something like that. What's inside? Two badly wounded boys. I take it they're not from my side of the Mason-Dixon line. That's right. They can't be moved. My boys need a bed. They'll be moving okay. Where are you folks from anyway? Augusta, Georgia. 
That's a shame. How about you, miss? Right down the road. I went to school in Philadelphia. Really? See, I like you already. That doesn't mean I won't shoot you. You hesitate once if any of my boys care. Are we clear? Clear as a bugle. Good. That retreat out here. Regrouping, not retreating. And I need you to shut your mouth. These boys have got to be moved, and they got to be moved now. Captain, you have to give us time to finish. No time, right now. Captain, if we move this boy, he'll die. Then he dies. Better dead than a rebel prisoner. Now let's go. Nobody knows anything, Doc. Are we leaving? I think we are, yeah. I think we're going back. But the Federals just retreated. They retreated 25 times. Hell, we retreated 25 times. Well, for what it's worth, I'd much rather go home than spend time in prison. I mean, if it's at all possible. Looks like you've been keeping some of the Federal boys happy, too, huh? He's under duress, believe me. A federal officer told us he'd shoot us if we didn't work on his men. With Captain Falstaff. An officer, definitely not a gentleman. That's what I understand. Are you familiar with him? Yeah. Damn cavalry Captain. Worthless in my book. Well, I'm going to go water the horses and head back into it, I reckon. Another patch of dirt to conquer, eh? You know the game. Corporal, was that you playing last night? Yes, sir. Thank you. I appreciate that. It helped me sleep for once. Colonel? Evening. Evening. What do we got today? I'm just, just over to the hospital checking on some of our wounded. Going over the latest scouting reports, and our reports on our men, including the sick, the wounded, and the ones who have been arrested. Speaking of arrested, where's that nephew of mine, Lieutenant? Well, sir, we called officer's call 10 minutes ago, has yet to arrive. That boy's been a thorn in my side ever since he came here. I might get tired of him. I know I made my sister a promise that I'd keep him alive, but... Speaking of thorn in my side, where have you been? Sir! Keeping up with the troops, sir. Keeping up with the troops. I can I can imagine which troops you were keeping up with. Which ones and which body house were you into this time? <coughs> Thank you, sir. Yeah, okay. All right, what are we looking at here? Sir, we're looking at the latest, to this. the latest reconnaissance of our scouts. To our direct east, we have General Sherman and his army. We are located here. We have no enforcements in the middle. And the swamp area to our north, we have nobody there. About three miles from our position, we have a river. On the other side of the river, in the woods, there's actually two brigades, one to our northwest. There's two full regiments of cavalry and infantry, one full cavalry in the middle, and to our northeast, we have one full cavalry and one full regiment of infantry. Right. Okay, any idea who we're going to be going up against? Sir, the latest report, Chessman. Chessman? Yes, sir. Oh, great. And that, and that lunatic sergeant major he's got, still he's there, still sir. with him? Still there. Oh, that's just what I need. Warn the men, do not get overconfident with these people. I fought with these individuals in Mexico. I know these, these rebels can fight. They'll fight like a wildcat, and if you make a mistake, they will shove it down your throat for you. They will kill you and laugh while you bleed to death. Yes, sir, I'll warn the men. Speaking of mistakes, where did you get that red vest at? 
I got this when I was in Nashville last. That is not a military vest. Put one on. You're part of this United States Army. You will look like it. Whether you act like it or not, you will still look like it. Try to put up some kind of masquerade as a, as a respectable officer, please. Yes, sir. Try not to embarrass us all. By the way, I want you to go see the doc. Am I sick, sir? Yes, you're sick. He's going to wean you off of that John Barleycorn. You've been swilling <laughs> that stuff ever since I've known you, ever since you've come out here. You're going to get cured off this stuff. Go. Yes, sir. Did, was there something about? I said go. Yes, sir. I was wondering you about the hat off. Get a proper hat on. Go see the doc. And go. Now. Yes, sir. Now, boy. No, you may help. not. Well, I'll take mine. I promised your, I promised my sister, your mother, I would take care of you and I would not let the rebels kill you. I didn't make a single promise that I wouldn't do it myself. Now go. Yes, sir. Go. That boy's been a thorn in my side ever since he came out here. I understand, sir. Vengeance is mine, thus saith the Lord. Ah, saith the Lord indeed. How about me? Vengeance is mine. You're hurting Stop me. Stop your wide and I've had enough. Stand up when there's an officer in your camp. My goodness, this is the worst looking bunch of military men I've ever seen in my entire life. What the world are you, boy? Let's call you Smiley, huh? Smiley? That funky looking hat. Get that off, boy. You don't look military to me at all. You! What in the world are you, boy? Must be the religious type, huh? Is this your little cross? Get out of my face. Why have you arrested for bribing an officer? Bribing for what? What are you talking about, boy? You see he's trying to offer me gifts? What in the world are you, old man? What is that? It's a dog. A what? A dog. This is a military camp. We should not have dogs in camp. I'll show you how we take care of that little problem. Come here, puppet dog. Don't you dare. I sure right, will, man. This is a military camp. Do and I will make sure Stop it. that somebody's going to pay for it. My God, I'm going to shoot something in this house around here. Leave him away. Get off of me. Captain. Hold that dog. What are you doing? I'm keeping up with the men, sir. You have been relieved of your duty as of yesterday. Since when? Yesterday morning. By whose authority? Your colonel. My uncle? Your colonel. My colonel, indeed. He brought me here to be in this stupid military. He's not my daddy. He is your colonel. He is your superior officer. He will send you home. Yeah, you think. Give me some of that. Come on. I might just lay here for a while and relax. That is the best decision you've ever made. Ah, uh, uh, maybe so. Good night. Ma'am, are you all right? I think so. Come on, let me help you up. I think it's time for you to leave. Ma'am, yes, please take the dog with you. Okay. This is no chance for a military camp for you either. Come on. Need to talk to you, sir. Yeah, what? Sir, I want to let you know that your nephew and I had a brawl. Had to lay him out, sir. He came into camp drunk, struck a woman, about shot a dog, hit me. I had to knock him out, sir. Should have killed the idiot. I swear, I've had enough. I've had it. I've got enough. On my mind, too much right now. I'm sick and tired of dealing with him. He is your responsibility. He's your subordinate officer. You take care of him. Yes, sir. He's actually up against the tree, just laid out He'll cold. probably wind up getting up and running around and shooting somebody. He's still got a gun? No. He still has his pistol, sir, but I have the cylinder. He won't be able to <laughs> shoot anybody in his state. Good. Good. Like I said, Captain, he's your responsibility now. You take care of him. You do whatever you have to. I don't want to. I don't want to hear about it anymore. You sure this is a good idea? This is meant to be officers only. I'm gonna dance with a pretty woman before I leave here. That's all there is to it.
evening, ma'am. Captain? Good evening, gentlemen. What brings y'all out this way? Don't mean no disrespect, Captain. We heard there was a dance and we thought we'd come along and see for ourselves. This dance is for officers only. That don't seem quite fair. How do you figure that? Well, I don't know. You tell me. Are they going to have a dance somewhere else for soldiers that don't happen to be officers? I reckon not. Lieutenant Ball, rules and regulations. Gentlemen, listen up. If you cannot waltz gracefully, do not attempt to waltz at all. If a lady refuses to dance with you, bear the refusal with grace. No profanity, no stomping of the feet, no smoking of tobacco, no spitting on the floor. Gentlemen, choose your partners. I'm certain they are rude. Mrs. Morgan, ladies, these rude men are the only reason your respectable household hasn't been burned to the ground. These rude men left their own homes and families to protect us from invasion. They've been hungry, thirsty, sick, tired, wounded, and lonely, and they just want to enjoy a little music and dance. General Sherman was hopping mad the other day. It seems we lost an entire supply train. Lost? More of a robbery, actually. Well, the train wasn't as well guarded as our munitions trains. What did the thieves acquire? Boots and saddles, primarily. Hmm. I wonder if it was Wheeler's men. What happened to the train? Stranded. The tracks before and behind were destroyed. I suppose. Just more work for me. Tell me, Parker, no one has approached you with the prospect of buying an entire trainload of boots and saddles, have they? Not recently. Mr. Parker, I imagine you have a lot of dealings in and around Atlanta. It is my base of operations at the moment. Well, if you happen to run shy of goods to trade, I suppose we could exchange information. Mr. Quartermaster, you're sounding more and more like a spy. Nothing of the sorts. That is not the case. Well, that's good. Because a man in my position who cannot keep secrets will not be a man in my position for long. Understood. But because you have been of service to me and the General, I have some information for you. All right. I'm afraid it comes in the form of a warning. Oh, dear. You may want to relocate any operations you have from Atlanta. I see. Would it be too much to ask for an estimated time frame? Atlanta will be completely under federal control by Christmas. Christmas of this year? Yes. Mr. Peabody, I am afraid you underestimate the resolve of this Confederacy. Maybe. But this information has been provided to you because you have shown yourself to be valuable to our cause. Take it or not, the choice is yours.
Captain Chessman. That's me. Sir, I have a message directly from General Wheeler. Yeah. You can tell him there's no need for reinforcements. The Federals just pulled up and left. I imagine they just plumb tired out too. Sir, he's looking for your troops to reinforce the cavalry at Rosaka. That's not possible, soldier. Rosaka's a six hour ride, a six hour hard ride. And that's if we don't stop and rest. Shit! 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 My boys need a break. Is that what you want me to tell them? No one gets any sleep anymore. No one. I'm just a messenger, sir. I understand. Hold up. Men, General Wheeler needs us north of Atlanta. The man here says it's critical. This means an all-night ride, fellas. Then we jump right into the fight. This is above and beyond the call of duty. Any of you think you can't make it, then don't go. There ain't nobody gonna think any less of you. Me for one, I'm going. I'll go. Well, I guess I have to die with you. I'm with you, Captain. I'm in. Time to saddle up, boys. I think you've got your answer. Boots and saddles, boys. Man up! Lordy, Captain, most tired I ever been. What's that glowing in the west there, Captain? Looks like the sun forgot to set. That's Atlanta. I imagine they're burning it. Shouldn't we move in? Try to help them? We ain't gods, Pierce. We just flesh and blood. There's only so much we can do. You seem distracted, Mr. Parker. I have a lot on my mind, Mr. Peabody. I will not apologize for the fact that the war has turned in our favor. I don't care about that. Your forces destroyed, burned, completely obliterated the entire warehouse district of Atlanta. You were given ample warning earlier this year. My primary warehouse was located in the center of that district. The goods in that warehouse had already been purchased and 
I had already accepted payment. What were the goods in question, Mr. Parker? A trainload of... Boots and saddles. Correct. I trust this will not interfere with our dealings. Nothing gets in the way of business. Not this war, not the next war, nor the war after that. Very good. I have a list. I will do whatever I can for you. Not a good idea. Good job. Kept him from shooting me in the back, but I see he doesn't have a cylinder in that pistol. Drop it. Drop it. And the cup. What unit are you with? With the cavalry, sir. Wrong answer. The only reason that I don't put one right through your head, two reasons. One, because my man is standing behind you and I don't want your brains on him. The other one is I don't want the rest of your unit down upon my men. Now you're gonna march yourself out of here right now, on foot. You gonna leave me without a horse? We're gonna eat him. Uh, start walking, that way, right now. Keep walking, real slow. You gotta eat my horse. I'm gonna cut you <laughs> Come on, dude. Kill the egg. <laughs> Come on. Come on. <laughs> My dearest companion, I sit myself to write a few lines and to tell you our health and the happenings of home. I have sad news. Our nephew William has departed this life. I have consoled my sister with the blessings of a Christian's assurance that all things work together for the good of his people. She is inconsolable, I fear and has requested that I impress upon you once more the importance of protecting and keeping from harm her eldest son. Typhoid fever remains rampant in the Negroes, and I fear that your precious child will succumb to the dreaded disease as well, but I will protect her as I am able. I have no other news to speak of. We pray hourly for your safety, and that you will return to us. I remind you once more of your faithful promise to do so. Always. Your loving wife. I'll try. I tried.
Rachel? Sir, you're having one of your nightmares. Are you okay, sir? This is one of the worst ones you've had in a while, sir. Oh, I don't know how much longer I can deal with this. <sighs> sir, why don't you tell me about your nightmare this time? You never want to talk about it. It's about that idiot nephew of mine. He got killed. Sir, don't you remember? More than 24 hours ago, he was ambushed and he was killed, sir. He wouldn't listen. I did the best I could, sir. I know you did. I, I know you did. This war is just one big nightmare, that's all it is. Just one nightmare after another. It finally dawned on me the other day. I was down there at the hospital. Saw the dead lined up. They're all boys. Boys. Children. That's when it dawned on me. That's when it made sense what this whole stupid thing is about. Let's see how many children we can kill. We kill theirs. They kill ours. You know, a couple of women get involved, a couple of mothers. Then, oh well, they get killed too. Sir, it's not your fault. Yeah, it is my fault. No, sir, it's not. I took part in this. I'm like everybody else that took part in this. You know, I had an old Irish sergeant tell me one time that... The first time he heard that rebel yell, it sounded like the banshees coming to take our souls to hell for what we're doing to our fellow man. And you know he was right. He was right. Because we're all going to hell over this. You think God approves of what we're doing? Killing, slaughtering each other like animals? No. We're all going. It's just some of us are already part of the way there. All we have to do is finish the journey. Well, Damien, I appreciate you taking time to come pay me a visit. Hmm. You look tired, Damien. Are you, are you okay? Can't remember a time when I wasn't tired. It takes a toll on a person after a while. So what do you think? How, how much longer do you think it's gonna be before this disastrous conflict comes to an end? There's a lot left to be done, let alone end this war. So what do you mean by that? We need to wash things clean. You think so? Seems to me this has been wrapping itself up fairly quickly uh, on its own. You want to see that happen, Uncle Philip? Do you really want to see that happen? Of course I do. You know, I've invested all of my time, resources, finances, essentially my whole life to keeping this railroad going. All the destruction, the rails, the rail cars, the depots, the stations, all that's gonna have to be rebuilt. And I can see a lot of money in this reconstruction. That's the only way you see it? Dollars and cents? Well, Damien, like I said, I'm a businessman. And I like to recognize opportunities as soon as they arise. And this is an opportunity. Well, just what is it you'd like to see happen since you asked me the same thing? 
extermination. What do you mean by that? Kill them all. Kill every single one of them. Start from scratch. Every single one? You mean you're counting the children, the women, as well as all the men? Secesh women and children. They don't count. Well, Damien, I'm afraid you won't be getting any endorsement from me. And why is that? I've got to rebuild this railroad. It's going to take a lot of manpower. We've got soldiers coming back from the war that are going to be looking for work. I'm going to be counting on that workforce to rebuild this railroad. And if you kill all of them, how do you expect me to, to accomplish that? I just wish we had a weapon. A weapon so big, it could destroy an entire town with one blast. It'd be a thing of beauty. Well, Damien, I'm afraid this war has robbed you of an awful lot. I think it's robbed you of your humanity. And I think what's even more important, it's robbed you of what's in here. Sergeant Major, this is the area that it happened in. How do you know that, Tracker? I knew where they were headed. Yeah, this is where it happened. Where is he? There he is. Get him water, quick. Get him out of there. Is he alive? Yep. Cut him out of there. Get him some water. Damn Yankees. They left me to die. They got the captain. They got Chestnut. He is the rebel captain, sir, that was captured outside of Hampton. He doesn't look like a captain to me. What's your rank, Reb? Captain. R.L. Chessman. Hampton Legion. Beaufort Brigade. Was he alone when he was captured? Yes, sir. And he was heading somewhere very quickly. So you were outside of town, on your own, wearing an enlisted man's uniform, knowing we had arrived. What was your mission? Captain R. L. Chessman, Hampton Legion, Beaufort Brigade. Oh, shit! I am very familiar with the prison you have down here called Andersonville, a vile institution that has tortured and starved our boys for years. You look at me when I talk to you, boy. We have a prison at least as foul as Andersonville. If I send you there, you will not come back. If you have a family down here, you will not see them again. Do you understand me? Send this man to hell. Yes, sir. Captain Ward? Yes, Private. It seems Captain Chessman has been captured, sir. Thank you. You may stand at your post. Colonel, a word? Yes. We just got the report that Captain Chessman has been captured, sir. <laughs> Good. Good. Take a detail, go get him and bring him here. Yes, sir. Chessman is mine. Follow me, Private. He is mine. <laughs> About time we finish this thing. Colonel, I have a gift for you. Look at me. Sit! Sit down, Chessman. Sit. Private, take your post. Captain Chessman, you're coming with us. You understand me? You've got a choice. 
you can come with us peacefully. Otherwise, I'm going to let them put you on that troop train that's going to take you off to that hellhole prison camp where you might make it to Christmas, but I doubt it. Or you can come with us, behave yourself, and there's a good chance you may see your home again. Now, what's your choice? What the hell you think you're going to do? Take me out and kill me? Chessman, if I was going to kill you, I would have snuck in there. When they first brought you in here, I would have cut your throat in your sleep. And nobody would have been the wiser. You understand me? You could try. No, I would have done it. I would have done it. No doubt I would have done it. Now, don't think that I'm asking you to compromise your southern honor. You're not helping me. Do you understand? I'm just using you as a piece of trade goods. Well, I'll go with you because I just want to see how it's going to turn out. But it's going to turn out one way or the other. And it's going to be finished. Hmm. You understand? We'll see. Captain, take him and get him a mount and give us about three days' provision. Yes, sir. Private. Yes, sir. Do you remember what the colonel just told you? Yes, sir. What you saw, heard, and seen never happened. You did not see anything. Get up! I said get up, Chessman! Chessman, what did I tell you? Let's go, Private! Finally gonna finish this thing, one way or the other. What's on your mind? Want a parlay? You unarmed? I'm unarmed. Well, I'm unarmed. What's this about? The Colonel wants to discuss some terms with you. I'm sure he would. I see he's got my Captain Chessman. Well, Captain has switched officers' coats and put on a first sergeant's blouse to hide his true rank as Captain. So let's see what this Colonel of yours has to say. Well, I will go back and bring the Colonel up here. If he's got the cojones, tell him to come on back and talk to this Sergeant Major. I'll do that, Sergeant Major. Colonel, I have discussed terms of the parlay with that Sergeant Major. He is unarmed. I told him we were unarmed. And we'll discuss the terms of this prisoner exchange. Is this yours? Colonel, what exactly is on your mind? It's about that young man that you stomped the other day. That was my nephew and I promised his mama I'd take care of him. I watched him, I watched him come into this world. I put him astride his first horse. Then I had to pick him up after you stomped him like a dog. Colonel, I've never regretted killing any Yankee. But I'll tell you, I see what it's about now. It's about a promise to a woman that you couldn't keep. When I give my word, I keep it. It doesn't matter who it's to, even to you. I would highly suggest you cut your losses today. I thought you were unarmed. The sergeant asked me if I was unarmed. You said you was unarmed. One armed. I knew you was a dirty line, no good reb. You're gonna take and you're gonna walk away from here today. And I'm taking Captain Chessman with me. Turn around. Turn around, sir. I cannot let this go, Sergeant. I cannot let this go. I am not letting this go. 
Oh, Colonel. Oh, Colonel. Oh, Colonel. 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 Oh! Colonel. No, 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 sir. No, no, sir. Finish it. Finish it. You get bumped down to sergeant oil? No, it's too dangerous to wear bars. Where's the flag? Not the best idea right now. He's inside. What's his spirit like? Cloudy. What? I beg the general's pardon, but I need those numbers. You're gonna need a drink. We in the right damn place. How many, general? We need to know. Best reports say 50,000 troops. Maybe more. You wanted to know. But they're all out west of the Savannah River, correct? At the moment, these are well-equipped troops. Captain Jessman, they have pontoons. They have everything they need. My guess is they'll all be in South Carolina by the end of the week. I'd like to see my family, if there's enough time. If you haul ass there and back, keep in mind there are federal scouts everywhere. They could be at your place tomorrow. They could be at your place tonight. Whatever you do, do not let down your guard. Yes, sir. How long are you here for? I gotta go back in the morning. Where's Peyton? He's in town. What town? Hampton. Hampton? I was just through there. I saw your daddy. Why is Peyton there? He's looking to join up. There's nothing I can do to stop him. 
I'll stop him. He thought you'd be so proud of him. I would be, but that's not the point. We're gonna have to work this out. So, Peyton, how things go in Hampton today? I didn't sign up yet, if that's what you mean. You know that's what I mean. He wanted to talk to you about it first. I figured I'd try to get a hold of you before I signed the paper. Peyton, why do you want to join up? Well, they need every able-bodied man. Yeah, I'm aware why they need every able-bodied man. Dying is so easy out there, Peyton. You don't get to stop, back up, or think about it. A bullet hits you, bam, you're gone, just like that. R.L., wasn't that the same when you went in? Things were different back then. We thought we could win. So, you don't think we can win? We ain't going out without a hell of a fight, boy. You've been riding your horse. Yes, sir. I used to do the same thing when I was your... RL, are you okay? RL, are you all right? I can't let you do it, boy. What do you mean, Paul? I can't let you join up, son. But he's been doing everything. No! Y'all need to listen to what I have to say. Listen to what I have to say. You see this? This is what I have to wear out there. What's the rank? Sergeant? That's right. That's what I have to wear out there. I thought you were a captain. I am a captain. I can't even wear my own damn uniform out in that field. If they see my rank, I'm a dead man. This ain't fair. It's not about what's fair, boy. It's about living or dying. And there's been far too many dying. Far too many. Look at all of them. We gotta go warn the lieutenant. Henry, they're raiding the nursery. Look at who they're putting in the front line. Afternoon, soldier. Ma'am, sir. What's your name, son? Joshua. How old are you, Joshua? I'm 16. How old are you, really? I joined up fair and square. They had me sign my name. Captain Chessman, I'd like to file an official letter of protest. 
Protest? Protest for what? Doc Alden and I just spoke to a young boy who was allowed to join up. This boy appeared to be 12, maybe 13 years of age. Well, how old did he say he was? He said he was 16. Well, maybe he is 16. This boy was not even approaching 16, Captain. We cannot just sit by and watch this happen. Miss Olivia, you know I don't allow anything like that in my troop. Yours is not the only troop. We cannot allow this to happen. If it doesn't concern my troop, there's not anyone going to listen to me, and you know that. Are you refusing to forward my letter? It's signed by the doctor as well. No, no. I'll forward your letter. I appreciate that, Captain. Down by the riverside, down by the riverside. I'm gonna lay down my heavy load. Down by the riverside, down by the riverside, down by the riverside. I ain't gonna study no war no more. I ain't gonna study war no more. I ain't gonna study war no more. Where did you learn that song, sir? I'm a Quaker, and in our fellowship, we welcome our African brethren as equals. You must be Colonel Peabody. I am he. Now what can I do for you, gentlemen? Gentlemen? No one's ever called us gentlemen before. I like you Quaker folk. Daniel, let me do the talking. Colonel Peabody, is it true that now that your arm is here, we don't have to stay on the plantation? Only if you so desire. President Lincoln issued the Emancipation Proclamation nearly two years ago now. You're free men. We didn't know. They never told us. Unfortunately, the Confederacy has not acknowledged Mr. Lincoln's proclamation. Now, what would you like to do with your freedom? We'd like to join up. Very well. What are your names? My name is Joshua, and this is my son, Daniel. What work did you do? Well, I was a blacksmith, and he was a groom. Private Joshua Smith, Private Daniel Smith. I will give you a note that you will take to the supply sergeant. Unfortunately, we no longer have any uniforms, but he can still process your paperwork. You will then report to the stables. When you hear the bugle, it is dinner time. You will be paid at the first of each month. Is that satisfactory, gentlemen? That sounds just fine. Take heed, gentlemen. General Sherman is very particular about the care of his horse. We'll take good care of him, sir. I am sure you will. One more thing. If you are going to be a part of this army, you must learn something very important, and that is how to salute. Stand straight. Palm up, palm face out, like this. Very good. Thank you, sir. No, thank you. You have reminded me why I have been here. I have thought of the Hebrews when they made their exodus. They were free but they did not yet have their freedom. Sir? No one is truly free till they can claim what is rightfully theirs. No one is truly free till they can choose their own path in life. Amen. Amen. Peabody. Yes, sir. Can you find me some apple brandy? Right away, sir. Paul, who are you? I'm a nurse. Our nurses have not yet arrived. I am tending some men who cannot be moved. What were you doing in there? I had to remove a young man's leg, and he is in agony. I have to find something to alleviate his pain. Well, that fine apple brandy should help alleviate his pain. The soldier, is he one of ours? Bullets do not discriminate. Neither do I. But yes, he was wearing a blue coat. Will he survive? 
I believe he will, even with the loss of the leg. I suppose I must thank you for not shooting me. Truth be told, I could not shoot anyone. Could not? You are an armed officer. I am a Quaker. Regulations say I have to carry a sidearm, but there is no regulation saying that it has to be loaded. A Quaker in Sherman's army. I'm the quartermaster. Ah, because you are honest, you do not steal. I am just a man among men. In this way I can serve both my conscience and my country. I see. Could you take me to see General Sherman? For what reason? I have nothing in the hospital. I need food, bandages, soap, chloroform, all kinds of medicine. And I must protest the enlistment of children in the armies. Very well. Come with me, please. Your brandy, sir. Where's my apple brandy? This rot gut is a last resort. Begging the General's pardon, sir, but there was a young soldier who lost a leg. I gave it to him for the pain. You gave an enlisted man my brandy? With all due respect, sir, he sacrificed a limb for the cause. I can always procure you more brandy. Of course. Is there anything else? A lady requests an audience with you, sir. You mean one of the rebels? She is a nurse. She is tending both our wounded and theirs. Bring her in. Madam, please be seated. Now, would you explain your business here? Sir, this war is claiming the lives of our children. Boys as young as 12 years old are enlisting and being killed. I am here to beg you to put a stop to this cruelty. War is cruelty. There's no sense trying to reform it. The crueler it is, the sooner it will be over. But these poor boys did not cause this war. Most of them do not even understand why they are fighting. You are a father. Would you want this for your own children? I lost one son when he was nine. I lost my youngest son when he was only six months. At least you rebel boys were allowed to grow up a little. Sir, I am truly sorry for your loss. But your boys died at home, surrounded by their loving family. Our children in the field endure hardships that break the strongest men, and then they perish, alone and terrified. Please, halt this slaughter of the innocents, lest there will be no one left when this war is over, and your name will be synonymous with the utmost brutality. If the people raise a great howl against my barbarity and cruelty, I will answer war is war and not popularity seeking. Whoever wears a rebel uniform will bear the wrath of the United States Army. And the battlefield is no place for a lady. Colonel Peabody will escort you back to your home. What was my home is now in the ashes of Atlanta. I intended to make Georgia howl and civilian casualties are an unfortunate but unavoidable consequence. The South has grieved with every step of your march. Your northern brethren share your grief. General, I shall not denounce your methods, for you are a man of war and I am a woman of peace. But as long as our soldiers continue to fight and bleed, so shall I stand by the field to nurse them. And I must make one more request. Madam, I can do nothing for you. Yes, you can. I understand that you have a great deal of respect for your field nurses. That is my profession as well. Please, give me supplies. I can still save a few lives. Sir, our nurses have not yet arrived, and she is treating our wounded as well as theirs. Very well. 
I've learned that nurses are far more popular than any of us generals. War is hell, and you are truly the angels of the battlefield. Fill out the requisition in triplicate and bring it to me in the morning. Sir, I have men who need medicine today. Very well. Just sign my signature. I am most grateful for your generosity. I have long admired Clara Barton and her associates. And when your nurses do arrive, I shall be honored to work alongside them. Peabody, are my quarters prepared? Yes, sir. That has been attended to. I see no reason why I'll continue to be needing you. You're dismissed. Thank you, sir. Madam? Miss Olivia, Sherman's getting close. We got to evacuate. Is Doc in the wagon? Yes, we got as many as we could in there. I can ride. Ma'am, I'm afraid we don't have any spare horses. But don't worry, ma'am, we would never leave you. You can ride with me. Sir, it would be highly improper for a lady to ride behind a gentleman who is not her husband or a family member. What about him? Can he keep up with the infantry? He can barely stand. Well, ma'am, I'm sorry. We'll have to leave him. Take this man instead. He cannot walk, but he can hold on. I can't let you do that. You'll be captured. I am not a soldier. Please, take this man. You have to leave immediately. All right. Are you sure you can ride? If you just help me up, if I have somebody to hold on to, I'm pretty sure I can ride. Miss Olivia, you take this cross. It was my grandfather's. He wore it at Lexington. It'll protect you from Sherman. Thank you. This ride will not be pleasant, but hold on and you will recover. Down with the eagle, up with the cross.
Miss Olivia, where are you going? I'm going out to see if I can locate some of the wounded. You know I could order you to stay, but I know it wouldn't do any good. So here. Thank you, Captain. But can you use it? On anyone who could attack a wounded man, of course I can. Doctor. What? Miss Olivia, help the other soldier. But this boy needs help. Miss Olivia. But we have no, to try to. No. Nothing. So, Josh, where you come from? Right up the road, Hampton County. Does your mama and papa know where you are? Mama does. Daddy died fighting. Like you, like a good soldier, huh? Doc. Yes, Joshua. I want to go home. It won't be long now, son. It won't be long. Mr. Peabody, in all of our meetings, you always warn absolute Colonel Regalia. Why are you incognito? Already several of our officers have been assaulted. And last week, a man I knew very well, a major, was murdered in his sleep. Are you thinking guerrillas? Who else? Mr. Peabody, this march that has been perpetrated by your General Sherman has been brutal on the people that live here. Do you think there'll be uprisings? Maybe, but... The resources are so depleted. So you have nothing left to trade? Not really. Not as much. Personally, I'm just waiting for the next step. And what might that be? Well, the way I see it, everything that has been destroyed will have to be rebuilt. And within this reconstruction, we will find an ocean of opportunity. Perhaps. Well, 
what do you plan on doing after this conflict is over? I mean, you're a clever man with good ideas. You have a good head for business. I just want to go home. Home and family, of course. But think about it. Are you really going to be content living out the rest of your days on that Pennsylvania farmhouse porch, watching the sun go down, watching the sun come up, watching the sun go down, watching the sun come up? Yes, it is all I want. It is all I dream of. Yes, well, I must apologize for my demeanor at our last meeting. You gave me fair warning about what was about to happen to Atlanta, and I ignored that information, but it was good information. Yes, it was good information. But where does that leave us? I would like to return the favor. You have information for me? I do. But like me, in our last information exchange, you will probably turn a blind eye. I'm listening. There is a carriage of gold headed north. Please continue, Mr. Parker. Plans have been set into action regarding your beloved Mr. Lincoln. What would be the reason for these plans at this point? Revenge. I do have the laudanum, Mr. Parker. And I have the apple brandy. We mustn't keep the general waiting. You've chosen an appropriate day to come back home to me, James Peabody. This truly is a good Friday. It has been a long and difficult journey, and there is much that I have to tell you. And we will talk. We will talk about everything from morning till night, if you wish. But first, I'm afraid there is a schedule to discuss for tomorrow. I know you've been looking forward to the day that you did not have to wear this uniform. However, the good folk of town have scheduled a grand parade. Quite a to-do, actually. A parade? Well, very well. It seems I will be marching again. Nay, all you must do is sit on the review stand and wave. I am no hero. There are men who have received other marching orders who are more deserving of being on that review stand. Let's get you inside for a while. I imagine you're hungry. Sure, really. Miriam, what is wrong? I've just come from town, James. I, I was helping with the preparations for the parade. I'm afraid it's been canceled. Oh, I'm sorry. Why? James, I can't even say. Please. What has happened? Official news. I saw the telegram. Yes. President Lincoln has been assassinated. My father, Captain R. L. Chessman, Confederate States of America, was one of the lucky ones. He came home. As the many thousands of sons, brothers, and fathers of the South returned, 
the nation began to rebuild. But these brave soldiers will never be forgotten. These were the men who rode with General Lee, the men who rode with General Wheeler, the men of Hampton's Legion. the saddle for three days now riding with general lee wonder if my girl is thinking of me riding with general lee running with confederate cavalry riding with general lee Gunning with Confederate cavalry, riding with General Lee. You could hear the rebels at Chancellorville, riding with General Lee. When the Yanks fell back down over that hill, riding with General Lee. Running with Confederate cavalry, riding with General Lee. Gunning with Confederate cavalry, riding with General Lee. Running with Confederate cavalry, riding with General Lee. Riding with General Lee. Riding with General Lee. Riding with General. 